Hi everyone, it's Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. I'm on a little bit early because I wanted to make sure that I have everything set up right. So let me refresh my page here. Make sure I have the volume turned down. Here we go. Okay, all is well. All is well, so I'll be able to see comments. Um, if you're joining me live, thank you. If you're watching the replay, Thank you. Um, this is my half hour show, give or take, where I do a live stamping class, usually do two projects. And if you place a $35 minimum order before shipping and tax by this Friday at midnight, I send you the project kits to make those two projects that we do today. So you'll have this video to watch so that you can see how to do it. And I also made a project sheet too, which I will put in the link to the description to this video and I'll upload this to YouTube too also when I'm done so it's on my blog I put it everywhere so you'll have lots of um, opportunity to be able to see it and recreate what we're making today so this I don't know this I, I'm doing this face to face today because I thought I'd try something different um, when I first started doing Facebook lives this is how I did it on my porch and um, I kind of miss doing it that way <laughs> I actually feel more comfortable doing it that way and so I thought I would try it hi Mike so I thought I would try doing this, but it will necessitate me flipping the phone downwards. So um, I will warn you before I do that in case you get dizzy and you need to close your eyes while I do that. So, so at the beginning of every happy half hour, I like to just um, do a little bit of housekeeping about what's going on in the Stampin' Up! world, what's going on with the Joyful Stamper. So I can't remember if I introduced myself, but I'm Nicole Steele. I'm the owner of The Joyful Stamper. You can find me on the internet at thejoyfulstamper.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I've been using Stampin' Up! products for 20 years, and I ran this as a business, I want to say back in 2005, and then I had my three girls, so I threw myself full-time into raising them, and now they are, two of them are in high school, and one is in college, so... I decided to come back to doing this again because they're pretty independent now, which kind of makes this mama's heart sad, but that's what kids are supposed to do, right? Grow up. And they're not all gone yet. You know, they're still, still dependent on us. And it's just, um, it's really, it's really neat to see how the relationship evolves between caretaking for them and then becoming their own person and having a relationship with them and talking to them as if talking to a young adult, which they are. So it's really, it's exciting. But in any case, I'm digressing. Feel free to jump in with any comments, any questions you have. Um, I also wanna throw it out there that I am going to do a giveaway for anyone that shares this video. It really helps my little business here on the internet and I so appreciate any and all support that I get from my friends, uh, my customers, my family. And so I wanna show my appreciation by doing a giveaway. So next Tuesday I'll do the giveaway. If you share this video, make sure to type shared in the comments because Facebook doesn't always let me see who shares this. So after you hit the share button, type shared, I'll put your name into a drawing for a giveaway that I will do next Tuesday. Okay, so um, so what's going on in the Stampin' Up! world? Well, celebration. Celebration. If you are not familiar with Stampin' Up!, maybe you're new to stamping. Celebration is Stampin' Up!'s biggest promotion of the year. For every $50 that you order, you get to pick a level one item out of this catalog for free. And there's no limit. There's absolutely no limit. You can order three of the same items. You can get one of each from this whole catalog. Um, it's totally up to you. And the way Stampin' Up! does it is they've been doing something new the past couple of years. You can pick a level one item with every $50 ordered, or you can choose what's a, called a level two item with a $100 order. And those tend to be more stepped up freebies, like a punch or, or a set of dies. But there's lots of great stuff in the celebration brochure. It goes all the way through March 31st while supplies last. And they are about to add more product to the celebration release. So stay tuned. If nothing's appealing to you in this brochure. Just stay tuned. There's going to be lots of more stuff coming down the pike. 
And if you need a catalog, if you need a brochure, email me at Nicole at the joyful and I will get these out to you. I will get you a catalog package in the mail ASAP. There's lots of good stuff to be looking at in here. The other thing I want to tell you about is Paper Pumpkin. Paper Pumpkin is stamping up some monthly crafting kits. So if you're short on time, if you don't have a very large stamping space, then Paper Pumpkin would be the kit for you. It's an all-inclusive kit. You get a stamp set, you get an ink pad, uh, you get projects, and they're all designed to be done between 30 and 45 minutes. I know me personally, I like to put my Piper Pumpkin kits into my purse and take them with me on the go. You can put them together while your, your kids' sports practices or musical lessons. You can take them on vacation with you. They're really portable. Um, you can make them completely as is. There's always a video tutorial and written printed instructions. Or you can go rogue and you can make your own alternate ideas. You get a monthly newsletter that will give you alternate ideas and it will also give you the opportunity to purchase refills for the kit. So February's kit is celebrate uh, grand occasions with a lovely day and it's a birthday kit. It's designed to coordinate with one of the celebration birthday stamp sets. So you get this paper pumpkin kit, maybe purchase a prepaid subscription for three months. That will earn you a free celebration item. You can choose the happy birthday stamp set that goes with this paper pumpkin kit um, and you can create even more projects with it. So if you want to sign up for that, just head to my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com and I have a shopping link there. I've got a paper pumpkin page. You can subscribe and sign yourself up. So, and you need to sign up by February 10th for February's birthday kit. And I always, always post what the colors are and what the kit contents are for the following month so that you know if you don't like surprises. If you do like surprises, don't look. Okay, the other thing that's going on is Stampin' Up! is having a celebration coordination product release. And I think at this point, I'm gonna put, put my phone down so that you can see what I'm showing you. So, if you're going to get dizzy when you do this, when I do this kind of thing, then close your eyes. So, let me see here. Okay, that seems like a pretty seamless transition. Let me get it straightened out here. I think that looks good. Um, there's a delay on my video, so I want to make sure that I'm doing okay. Um, okay, looks pretty good. So this is what I was talking about. Stampin' Up! is releasing on February 4th, coordinating products. And these are what they are dies and 12 by 12 designer series paper um, these go with different celebration stamp sets that we have so if you're looking through the celebration brochure and you're thinking that's really cute I don't like fussy cutting these dies will take care of that they'll fussy cut some of the images out for you this pleased as punch designer series paper coordinates with four of our punches the Umbrella Builder Punch, the Heart Punch Pack, the Small Blossoms Punch, and the Timeless Tulip Builder Punch. So you can actually punch those images out from the, this pack of designer series paper, or you can just cut the sheets as they are, leave them be, and just use them in your projects. Those are going to be available to customers beginning February 4th. If you can't wait, though, you can sign up as a demonstrator now with me and my team of Joyful Stampers and you can put these items in your starter kit bundle. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, they're really nice. I'm excited about this. So let's get started with our projects for today. And what I have for you is we are going to be working with, oh, let me move all these things here. We are going to be working with the Timeless, or the Tropical Oasis bundle. I. I love this. This was the very first bundle I saw in the catalog that um, I just absolutely had to have. This was the first thing I wanted to play with. And you will find it on page 38 of the mini catalog. If you don't have a copy of this catalog, shoot me an email and I will get you a catalog package in the mail. So look at all those samples. They're beautiful. I especially like this one. I love this one. Um, with that coastal weave 3d embossing folder oh my goodness 
Here's all the colors in that Tropical Oasis suite. Here's the designer series paper, which we're going to be using some of that today. There's a bundle that includes the stamp set and the dies. Coastal Weave 3D embossing folder. There's some metal trinkets there. There's Saddle Brown stays on ink and a refill. This is on back order until I believe it's March 2nd. But I'm so excited to have this option for watercoloring. So far we've had Jet Black, but sometimes it's a little bit harsher than what I want for my projects. And now I have a softer brown that I can use. There's a memory, Tropical Oasis Memories and More card pack, which is super if you like easy card making or scrapbooking. And then some braided burlap trim, which we'll also be using that today. And if you flip over to the next page, you can see in greater detail the stamp set and the dies. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a Stampin' Up! catalog, what Stampin' Up! does is outlines the images in the stamp set that have either a coordinating die or a coordinating punch. So in the case of this Timeless Tropical set, this flower, this leaf, these palm trees, this flower, and this pineapple all have a die to cut them out in this set here. Now there's also other dies in the In the Tropics dies set um, that don't necessarily have a coordinating image in the stamp set, but nevertheless, still lots of fun to use, lots of creative possibilities. So this is what we're gonna use today. All right, there's the cards, there's the stamp set. Which one should we make first? Um, I think we'll start with this one, okay. And I try to be really organized here, so let's see just how organized I am. Let me grab my pieces. Okay. I'm going to put all the, I actually have a project sheet for this that lists all the dimensions for or the project today. And I will link to it and it'll show you the measurements for everything, the products I use, the colors, so you don't have to guess at any of that stuff. So this frame right here, I used the Stitch So Sweetly dies found in the mini catalog to die cut this Tropical Oasis designer series paper out of the center. Now normally this is called a negative space and some people would throw that away, but I was looking at the cover of the mini catalog and I saw that one of the concept artists used the negative space from this to, as a frame and I thought, what a great idea. So I took the largest scalloped rectangle from the Stitch So Sweetly dies and I die cut it out. So this is the piece that was die cut out and we're gonna use this on the second card today. So this does not need to be thrown out or put to, or you know, wasted. And this is the frame that's left behind. We're gonna use this. Now, I just, I love these pineapples in this DSP here. And look at the pattern on the back of that. That is like a tropical fruit salad and it looks so yummy. Love it. But we're gonna use the pineapple side. The other thing I did is I took a piece of soft suede cardstock and I embossed it with the Coastal Weave 3D embossing folder. So this gets run through any die cut machine of your choice. I personally have a cuddle bug. Some people have a big shot, which is what Stampin' Up! used to carry. I don't think cuddle bugs are actually being made anymore. I actually bought mine, oh my word, 15 years ago, I think. Still going strong. But our 3D embossing folders leave a nice, deep impression on the cardstock. And I found that I get an even deeper impression if I fill a stamping spritzer with water and I just spray my cardstock before, give it a couple squirts before embossing it. So I squirt it with water with a stampin' spritzer and then what you do is you just lay your piece of cardstock in the embossing folder, close it, and you run it through your favorite die cutting and embossing machine using the, the combination of plates that is recommended by your die cut machine manufacturer. And then when you run it through the machine, it comes out nicely embossed. And you can use either side. It's usually two different looks. So that's the Coastal Wave 3D embossing folder. And that's part of the Tropical Oasis suite. That is going to get put behind our frame there. All right, I need to pull this card out for, for reference. Sometimes I, I make so many cards, sometimes I forget exactly what I did. Okay. 
then the next thing we are going to do, and you know what? I think I'm missing a little pineapple. Let me check my basket here. There it is. I've got it. Okay. Got my pieces here. I went ahead of time. I die stamped and die cut these pieces, but I'm going to show you how to get the two color looks to these stamps. So I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I will do both of these. I have the palm tree stamp and I've got the pineapple stamp from Timeless Tropical and we're going to be using Daffodil Delight and Pear Pizzazz ink. Open these up. Now there's an easy way to do it and a not so easy way to do it. The not so easy way is to take your stamp and you can see that's the bottom half of the pineapple and that's the top half. You can eyeball it like this and tap on just the bottom half of the pineapple to get just the yellow ink on there. And then you can pick up the pear pizzazz and tap just the top of the pineapple on there. And that actually would work pretty good for the pineapple, but the tree would be a lot more complicated because of how the leaves come down um, over the the trunk. So I'm going to show you an easier way to do this. Stampin' Up! has sponge daubers. They come in a pack of five in a little bag like this. I have more than five in here because I just this is just the way I store them. But you'll get five sponge daubers to a package. They're only five dollars. Not very expensive at all. And this is how they look when they're brand new. Okay. Well, I generally... So, I'm not real particular about it. Like sometimes I try to label them, but that doesn't work real well for me. I end up usually just going, oh, I'm going to use Daffodil Delight. Well, that one looks yellow, so I'm going to go ahead and just use it. So that <laughs> that's my system. But some people have them all nice and neatly labeled by color, and I'm really jealous of them. I just don't create that way. But if you put the sponge jobber on your fingertip and just pick up, in this case it's Daffodil Delight, I'm going to pick up some of that yellow and tap it on the area of the stamp that you want to have daffodil light, which in this case is the bottom half of the pineapple. Then I'm going to take another sponge dauber, which is my greens, and I'm going to tap it on the pear pizzazz ink pad, and I'm going to apply it to the top half of the pineapple. Then I'll give it a little huff to get the ink remoistened again, and then I'm going to stamp it down here. And you can see that was a lot easier application than trying to tap it on my ink pad. You can do that if you want. You can. But that the, using the sponge daubers is the method that I prefer. So now I'm going to try it with these palm trees. Because like I said, the palm trees were a little bit more complicated to do via the tapping of the ink pad method. So I'm going to pull out some soft suede ink. And let's see, we did pear pizzazz for the leaves. I'll use my sponge dauber and some pear pizzazz ink to apply some color to the palm, what are they called, fronds? There we go. And then I'll take the sponge dauber I have designated for browns and apply it to the trunk of these palm trees. Give it a little huff to re-moisten the ink and give it a stamp. And there you go. Brown tree or soft suede tree trunks, pear pizzazz, palm trees. Perfect looking, easy application. And the sponge daubers, they're only $5, so they're really easy to just throw into your order. So if you have an order going and with Celebration being here, if you're only, you know, at $45, you're looking for something to bump you up to $50 to get something for free, sponge daubers, throw a package on. You won't be sorry. Okay, let me close my ink pads so that I don't inadvertently stick my fingers in them because... Not that I would ever do that, but you know, lay that aside. And in the interest of time, I actually already went ahead and die cut those out. Now let me show you the, the framelits for the In the Tropics dies. Those are the framelits. So you can see there's actually quite a bit in this set. And then I'll show you what they cut out because it's kind of hard to tell just from looking at the framelits themselves. So we have the trees, the palm trees here, 
and we have the pineapple, the big pineapple, and we have the pineapple top, which look at this. It punches those leaves out like that so you can curl them to give them dimension. Isn't that crazy? I love that. We have the large flower here. We have a smaller flower there. We've got some little fronds. One goes there. There's a little leaf there. This is adorable. This is the mini pineapple that I just stamped. There's a leaf. And then we have the word aloha. And this, these flowers are actually all one die, but it's one die, but it cuts the three flowers out separately once you do that. And then there's a giant leaf. And I love that there's little centers in those two. And those little center flowers can pop out. So this, this has been probably my favorite die set in the entire catalog just because of, well, I'll be honest, it's the pineapples. I love the pineapples. So that's how I die cut everything out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put it all together. The first thing that needs done is to glue this down. That's our embossed piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna put little dabs of glue here. And with this multi-purpose liquid glue, less really is more. If you put too much on, it's gonna ooze out of the sides and you'll get glue all over your fingers and then things will start sticking to you and just not good. Okay, so, and I recommend liquid glue when using, and when gluing cardstock that's been dry embossed, just because of the pattern, it's not entirely flat. And then we have this that we're gonna put down to this frame. And, you know, I, yeah, I'm gonna use liquid glue for this one too, but I'm gonna draw a line all the way around it to make sure that it stays put over top of this. I hope I've been in camera the whole time. So thank you for joining me today again, whether it's live or you're watching the replay. I'm Nicole Steele of thejoyfulstamper.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I love paper crafting, whether it's scrapbooking or stamping or making 3D projects, I love it. I teach classes here where I live and I also teach them online like I'm doing right now. So. If you're watching this on YouTube and you like it, give me a thumbs up. You can leave me a comment, ask me a question, and be sure to share. I'm doing a giveaway next Tuesday for anyone that shares and types shared in the comments so that I know you've done that. And thank you so much for supporting my little business here. Now I'm going to use soft suede ink to stamp rest and relax. You deserve it on this piece of Pear Pizzazz cardstock. Um, I'm going to go over to the left a little bit, or over to the right, sorry, because I'm going to tear off that little edge there. Okay, I love the look of torn cardstock. I filmed a video this morning and I was just saying, I was tear doing some paper tearing. It was a scrapbook page I was making and I was saying, oh my goodness, I love the look of tearing paper. Now this is the braided burlap trim. You get a really nice big roll here. So. No need to hoard it, no need to be shy. I'm gonna cut off a piece. That's roughly the length of my sentiment here. There we go. And what's really nice about this braided burlap trim is if you, you can gently pull it apart to fray it. Now one thing I tried to do yesterday, I tried to cut it lengthwise down the middle to see if I could tie it, and it, it just disintegrated. <laughs> so that didn't work but that went into the trash but you can fray it really really nice and glue dots will hold it really nice on your cardstock so I'm just gonna press a couple onto there you know with Facebook live or any video it's really hard to know how fast people prefer you to teach some people like slow some people like you to move it along um, I really don't know what you prefer. You can let me know, but I'm, I'm doing the way I normally craft. I actually tend to be a slow crafter. I overthink things. I puzzle over things. I think that's why I like participating in challenges so much because it gives me some boundaries to work within so I'm not sitting there spinning my wheels going, what about this? What about this? Oh, squirrel, look at that shiny embellishment. I'll use that. I do challenges. It gives me limits with colors or with a sketch that type of thing or a technique. 
Now I use Stampin' Dimensionals to put my sentiment on there. These are going to get glued on, tucked into the frame with um, liquid, liquid glue. This tree I'm going to trim down a little bit because if you'll notice in the original card, I have it shorter. I know in real life that the pineapple would not be as tall as the palm trees, but this isn't real life. This is my card. And when you're paper crafting, you can do whatever you want. I could have had a purple pineapple if I wanted to. In fact, I made a card just this week where I had purple snowmen and the stamping police didn't come get me. So it's all good. So I'm going to just trim off some of those trunks and put some glue on the back and I'm going to tuck those in. Okay. I'm really liking how this is looking. So if you're new to stamping, let me know. I have a beginner's brochure I can set you up with. If you have questions about what kind of tools you need or supplies, let me know because I know it can be very easy to get overwhelmed with all of this. I mean, you see all this and you think, this is what all I have to have to paper craft. No, it's not. You can stamp with just paper, ink, and stamps. Sip. It's really, really simple. So email me, Nicole at the joyful stamper.com and I can show you how to get started. So that is the first card. There you go. You like, I like it. So I'll start on the second one. And this, the second card is where we're going to use the positive part that we cut out of the first card's frame. So see, we don't waste paper. This paper is too pretty to waste. We are going to make use of it. Grab my ink pad here. It's escaping from me. Okay. I want to show you a little trick too, actually. Let me grab a piece of grid paper. I want to show you a trick. Excuse the messiness of this grid paper. I stamp a lot. So this is a sentiment stamp. This was the rest and relax one I used. And you can't really see through it, but you want to make sure that you stamp it straight. So you kind of wonder, well, how do I get it know I, that I've got it straight on my block? I like to use a piece of Stampin' Grid paper. These are sold in packs of 100. They're found in the back of our big annual catalog. And what I do is I use these grid lines to line my stamping block up. So the bottom of my stamping block is lined up with one of the grid lines. And then what I do is I take the stamp and using the grid lines on this paper, I line up my stamp with those grid lines to make sure that it's on straight. Now, I'm not looking directly above my stamp, so it's kind of hard for me to see here. But if you use those grid lines, you can get them to match up with your, your sentiment stamp, and so you can make sure that you've got it stamped or straight on your block. And then what you can do, just give a little, little test on your scrap paper. Now, see, mine's a little bit crooked because I wasn't looking at it straight on, so let me try this again. And there you go. So that's one way you can use your Stampin' Grid paper. It's more than just protecting your, your desk surface. You can use it to line up your red rubber sentiments on your blocks. So just a little tip there for you. Okay, let's get on with the next project. Where did I put it? Hmm. I don't know, but I have the supplies for it. Did I tuck it under there? No. Huh. My card has disappeared. Well, we can proceed with it anyways because I remember how it goes. So, okay. So I have this piece, Tropical Oasis Designer Series Paper using the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And I have this piece of soft sea foam. And I use the Coastal Weave 3D embossing folder on this also and I also spritzed it with some water before running it through my die cutting machine not a requirement but it does give you a deeper impression my card base is also soft sea foam it's five and a half by eight and a half inches and I scored it down the middle at four and a quarter and folded it okay so the first thing we're going to do is glue this dry embossed piece to the card base and I'm going to use 
liquid glue to do that. So I'm going to put just a little skinny edge around the sides and down the middle. And I'm going to glue that. I see I got a little ink smudge on here. So I'm going to make sure I put that on the left side of my card where I know it's going to be covered by some other card elements. There's always a way to cover little mistakes. I almost never throw anything out unless it was like that burlap trim ribbon I just told you about where I cut it in half and it disintegrated into pieces. That I threw out for sure. It was no good. No good at all. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do, and we're going to need the fine tip glue for this one because um, some of the parts are really skinny. So using the In the Tropics dies, I don't know if you remember seeing the, pine, the large pineapple pieces. That's what we're going to use on there. But first we're going to do some stamping on this because this is going to get glued on top of it. I decided to make this a birthday card, so I'm going to use May Your Birthday Be Memorable, and I am going to use Early Espresso ink. Now this is a little mini Stampin' Spot. These are what you get in the monthly paper pumpkin craft kits. Um, you get these little, and these are super handy. I, I actually like these. They're really good for selective inking of your stamps too, and they're really portable. So these come in your paper pumpkin kit. You can also buy these cubes uninked from Stampin' Up! And then you can make your own set of Stampin' Spots. Now I'm going to stamp this in the upper right hand corner of this Stitch So Sweetly die cut piece. Just like that. Okay. Whoops. Things are falling everywhere. Okay. And I'm going to glue this right to the top here like that and I'm just gonna apply some liquid adhesive down the middle not on the far left and right sides just because it's gonna be slightly lifted off of my card base there anyways so there'll be enough glue applied in the middle that it'll hold nice okay now, I want to add a little bit more color and interest to these two pineapple die cut pieces. So I'm going to grab a pear pizzazz ink pad and a daffodil delight ink pad. And I'm going to grab my sponge daubers. And I'm going to use my sponge daubers and the ink to add a little bit of color to these. And I'm just going to go over them just like this. I don't have to completely cover them but just add some varying tones, varying shades to it. It makes it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to do the same with this top of this pineapple. I love pineapple. We just made chocolate fondue last night and we dipped pineapple pieces into it along with strawberries and bananas and it was good. You wouldn't think pineapple and chocolate go good together, but they do. They are super yummy. And I'm so excited because we even have chocolate fondue left over. And I'm going to have some more tonight after dinner. Yay! It really is the little things that get me excited. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down to my card. And I'm going to apply little dots here. You could also use glue dots that come on a roll. Mini glue dots to apply this. Because they will fit over those spaces without um, being seen. And I'm going to put my pineapple there and I like to put a block over it to hold it down. Now what I'm going to do for some extra fun with this die cut is I'm going to use my bone folder and I'm going to gently curl those leaves because I don't want them to tear. But I'm going to use the bone folder to give those a little curl. So not only did I ink these leaves but now I'm going to curl them to give them some dimension so that they pop out a little bit because that's what we're all about. It's making our cards interesting and fun. Little tropics in January. I've never been to Hawaii, but I have been to the Caribbean a couple times on a cruise. And it was rather nice. I especially liked, why am I drawing a blank? Tortula in the British Virgin Islands really, really love Tortula. I think it's because it felt like there weren't any rules there. 
I just kind of like that free spiritedness of it. Okay, so we've got that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this flower. I was like, okay, I like this card. I like it, but I think it could use something a little bit more, a little bit more. So I'm going to use a real red ink pad to stamp this flower. I'm not real good with flowers because I'm not a gardener. I'm not interested in gardening at all. But I think the flower of Hawaii is hibiscus. Is that what it's called? But I'm going to stamp this in real red ink. And before I stamp on my Whisper White paper, I'm going to stamp off once onto some scratch paper so I get a lighter red ink. And then I'll stamp on my Whisper White cardstock. So it's a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to take <clears throat> another sponge dauber, dab it lightly in the real red ink pad, and I'm just going to do some quick wrist flicks to add a little bit darker red to the center of that flower. Just like that. Just real quick. The trick with these sponge daubers is to be light. Have a light, gentle touch because you can always add color, but you can't take away the color that you've already added. So start off really light. Now I've already went and stamped and die cut one and I forgot to add color to the center of it so I'm going to go ahead and do that to my die cut one now. Just doing a quick wrist flick. There you go. I love this. Oh my gosh, stamping is so much fun. Hence the name The Joyful Stamper because I am joyful when I am stamping. There are other hobbies I have too, like I like to play the piano, I like to read, I'm trying out for Jeopardy tonight. I registered for the online test and it is a huge, huge dream of mine to be on Jeopardy. So I'm trying out tonight, it's be my third time, I'm not giving up. I heard it took James Holzhauer like 11 times. I'm not nearly as smart as him, but if he, if it took him that many times, that gives me hope. Now I'm going to add another piece of bur braided burlap trim to this card. I'm going to just cut a little piece like that. I found with this burlap trim, um, it doesn't work real well for tying it into a bow or a knot. It just, it's a little bit too, it's, it's thicker than I like for a card front or a card for the front of a card. So I'm going to trim it a little bit more. So I don't like to tie it, but I'm finding that it's really nice for just adding as a lay, a, you know, just a layering piece. So like in this case, it's drawing attention to the birthday sentiment here. And I'm going to attach that with glue dots. Just peel and press and stick. And I'm going to tuck that right underneath there, fraying the edge a little bit. And there you go. There's that card. Let me bring out the other ones. There's those two that we made today and this one. I hope you guys liked these cards today. There's a lot you can do with some sponge daubers, some ink, some paper, and if you really don't want to invest in dies or you don't have a die cutting machine, it's okay. It's okay. You can hand cut those. Get get a pair of paper stamps for 10 bucks. And you can do this. Cuz if you you can even see there's a white outline around these images. So there is no need to be precise, super close, and perfect. You can do this. You really can. And it's so fun. So thank you guys for joining me today. Um, make sure you head to my site, thejoyfulstamper.com. If you place a $35 minimum order by this Friday at midnight, um, which I think is January 31st or February 1st, but this Friday by midnight from my online store, use this host code right here. Move it down a little bit. Use this host code right here. And I also have this printed on my blog. And that will let me know that you want these project kits for free. I will send you the supplies to make these cards. One caveat, you will need the dies if you want to die cut these. Like I will die cut these pieces for you, but it's just too hard if I die cut these ahead of time and then you try to stamp them. So, but I will send you the paper so that you can stamp and either fussy cut them or die cut them out yourself um, with the dies that you purchase. So $35 minimum order before shipping and tax in my online store. It's Nicole Steele, the Joyful Stamper. And I will send you these project kits for free. Don't forget to use that host code. And don't forget it's celebration. So if you bump your order up, bump your order up to $50, you can pick something free from that celebration catalog. 
And if you need any recommendations, let me know because there's a lot of things I like in there. If you need a catalog, email me. I so appreciate you choosing me as your demonstrator. I appreciate the opportunity to earn your business. And have a blessed day, friends. Bye.